What's up, short attention span history nerds? My name is Mike Perry, and you're watching 10 Minute History. Some things you've learned in school may have since been proven false, like frogs being born from mud, or that the Kardashians are famous because they're talented in something. False information has never been more prevalent than when teaching about U.S. history. Most of us get our information from secondhand sources, outdated documentaries, or worse, memes on social media. As time goes by, historians, archaeologists, and improved technology rewrite the events around some of America's greatest historical events. From the first Thanksgiving to the moon landing, and not the conspiracy theory that the moon landing was staged by Hollywood, but rather what Neil Armstrong actually said as he stepped onto the moon, facts are often rewritten when new information comes to light. Here's 10 facts that your teachers may have gotten wrong about American history, especially if you're old like me. Number 10. Christopher Columbus discovered America. Truth is, as early as primary school, most of us learned that Christopher Columbus discovered America in an attempt to find a quicker route to India, but that's simply not accurate. In fact, the Italian explorer never even entered North America. Of his four trips across the Atlantic starting in 1492, Columbus explored the Caribbean islands of the Bahamas and Cuba. He also couldn't have discovered America because natives were already here. And in fact, Columbus is not even the first European to explore the Americas. That honor goes to Norse explorer Leif Erikson, who sailed to the West Hemisphere over 400 years earlier. Just think, if America had been colonized by the Vikings, the United States of America would have been called that. Myth number nine. While we're on the subject of Christopher Columbus, he didn't sail on the Nina Pinta and Santa Maria. In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. That's a common school song to help kids remember the date, 1492. The song also mentions the three ships, which are usually known as La Nina, Pinta, and Santa Maria. Historians know that the Santa Maria's real name was La Gallega, and the Nina was just the nickname of the Santa Clara. It's not known what the Pinta's actual name was at the time. This fact has been lost to history until somebody finally finds out. You see, that's how history works. Number eight, Pocahontas and John Smith fell in love, uniting two cultures. For starters, Pocahontas wasn't even her real name. Her official name was Amonute. Pocahontas was just her nickname, which meant playful or ill-behaved child. That's right, Pocahontas was just a child about 11 or 12 years old, so it's very unlikely that there was any romance between her and John Smith, a grown man, unless the story was rewritten by Jeffrey Epstein. In his journals, John Smith wrote that Pocahontas saved his life when her family tried to execute him. He also wrote that during his captivity, the two became close friends and they taught each other their languages, but never mentioned anything romantic happened between them. Myth number seven. The first Thanksgiving was shared between the Pilgrims and the Native Americans as a celebration of the combining of Pilgrim and Native American culture. Of the 102 original Mayflower passengers, only 44 survive. Local natives saved them from a frosty death by teaching them their winter survival skills. By early 1621, the Pilgrims had built crude huts and a common house on the shores of Plymouth Bay. Under William Bradford, governor of Plymouth Colony, Plymouth suffered less hardship than their English compatriots in Virginia in 1609 when 80% died from starvation and disease. Relations with the local natives remained relatively smooth in Plymouth and food supplies grew with each passing year. By autumn of 1621, the Pilgrims had much for which to be thankful. After the harvest, about 90 Indians joined the Pilgrims for the great English tradition of Harvest Festival. The participants celebrated for several days, dining on venison, goose, duck, turkey, fish, cornbread, then playing lawn darts, cornhole, dominoes, and even drank some Sam Adams beer. I'm just kidding, nobody likes Sam Adams beer. This tradition was repeated at harvest time in the following years. Myth number six. Witches were burned at the stake during the Salem Witch Trials. 
While most associate the Salem Witch Trials of 1692 with witches being burned at the stake, the truth is not a single person was burned. Of the 20 people who were convicted of practicing magic, 19 were hung near Gallows Hill and one person was tortured to death. Still pretty messed up for women who probably just had mental health disorders or could do math. Negative B plus or minus radical B squared minus 4AC over 2A. That's correct. A girl answered a math problem. You know what that means. A witch! But throughout history, many referenced burning witches at the stake, so it caught on. For example, a magazine in 1860 wrote, the North, having begun with burning witches, will end by burning us. Number five, Paul Revere rode horseback throughout the streets of Massachusetts yelling, the British are coming. Paul Revere did ride horseback to warn that the British were fast approaching Lexington, but he was not screaming. Instead, he was much more discreet since British troops might have been hiding nearby. He also wasn't alone. He was first joined by two other patriots, with 40 more joining at the end of the night. Lastly, he would never have called them British because many of the colonists still considered themselves British. At the time, he would have used the term regulars to warn the patriots about the invasion. In fact, we have Henry Wadsworth Longfellow to thank for this misconception. He wrote Paul Revere's Ride in 1861, but the whole poem is full of hyperbole and grand statements. So it's on you if you learned your history from a poem written almost a hundred years after the fact. By the way, I was going to read the poem, but man is it long. Instead, I'll scroll it here and you can read it. Number four, George Washington had wooden teeth. This is something that I've heard almost my entire life about our first president. The first president of the United States, George Washington, did not have wooden teeth. He did have a lot of dental issues. The former war general wore dentures made of ivory and possibly his slave's teeth, according to Mount Vernon Ladies Association. They were also made of golden lead. Back then, most dentures were made from dead soldiers' teeth. That's a lot of gross. But wood was never used in dentures, and it was definitely not found in Washington's mouth. No one truly knows where or how or why this rumor started. Some historians state that the ivory may have been worn down, therefore having a grainy wooden appearance, confusing early observers. I personally like to think that George Washington was sporting an awesome gold grill, maybe with GW embossed on the front teeth. Number three, the Declaration of Independence was signed on July 4th, 1776. While many believe we are celebrating the Declaration of Independence signing on the 4th of July, it was actually signed on August 2nd in 1776. The confusion lies in the fact that July 4th was the day that the final edition of the document was agreed upon. It was the deadline the Continental Congress gave itself and wrote down, though it wouldn't have been signed for another month. Adams wrote to his wife Abigail, the second day of July, 1776, will be the most memorable epic in the history of America. He said this because it had passed the Second Continental Congress without a single opposing vote and believed that the second would be the day that Americans would hold in great honor. When it was all finished, they all went to a park and grilled some hot dogs, burgers, and drank some Sam Adams beer. Just kidding, nobody likes Sam Adams beer. Number two, Thomas Edison invented the light bulb, but some say Edison is not the sole inventor. In fact, there were over 20 inventors who had created the incandescent light bulb before him. Additionally, it's rumored that he borrowed, or stole, details from those other inventors, much like today in technology. So why does Edison get all the credit? In part, it was because he was a great salesman, and he knew how to outpace everyone else who was working on the light bulb. Also, Edison was quick enough to receive the important patents that he needed to be solely credited for the invention. And number one, Neil Armstrong said, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind when he landed on the moon. If you examine the famous line uttered by Neil Armstrong in 1969, you'll realize it doesn't really make sense because man and mankind essentially mean the same thing. If his famous line was accurate, what he basically was saying was, that's one small step for mankind, one giant leap for mankind. Nonsense. 
Upon returning home, Armstrong clarified that what he actually said was, one small step for a man, which makes a lot more sense. Peter Shannon Ford, a computer programmer, said that he found proof that the missing A was actually just lost in the transmission back to Earth. Also, the moon landing actually happened. Sorry, deniers. So that's 10 US history facts most Americans have gotten wrong for years. I personally blame public schools. They're the reasons aliens don't visit us. Aliens are afraid that their kids might not make it into a private or charter school and be forced to attend our public schools. Anyways, if you enjoy short history videos with humor and sarcasm, consider subscribing to 10 Minute History. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Check out my other videos as well. The earlier ones are super cringy since I really didn't know what I was doing. If you don't want to miss a video and you want to be alerted when I upload, click on the bell. Until next time. Additionally, it's rumored that he... Additionally, it's rumored that he... Damn it. Also, Edison was quick enough to receive the important patents he needed to be 